Hey guys, this is Jihos, the community manager of Axie Infinity. And uh, yeah, welcome to another Axie stream. So uh, today I'm joined by Chuck Fresco and Arctic. Our Arctic is our newly announced moderator. And yeah, Chuck has been helping us make some content. So over the last week or so, we've been releasing battle moves for the different classes. Um, so those classes being aquatic, beast, plant, reptile, bug, and bird. Um, yeah, so we're going to go into a deep dive or a little bit of an analysis of those moves. Let's, uh, let's jump into a little bit of uh, analysis regarding the Axie move parts. So uh, one of our community members, Freak, um, yeah, he is a amazing uh, community member and he's put together a super useful tool for us. Um, it basically scrapes all the data for, of the moves from the API for us, and we can kind of be a consolidated place. You guys think, uh, are there any classes that stand out to you? Um, I guess, two-part question. Mm, yeah, I, I really like the bug mechanics, I think, out of all the classes. I think they're gonna be the most interesting tech choices. I Well, skipping a turn is obviously clear, pretty strong. Uh, yeah, I think kind of like Arctic, I'm also thinking the bugs were probably my favorite release. And I, I don't know, I just think they have a lot of variety and they have a unique ability, which is stun, which can't be found in any other class. So I think that's just, there's just something about the bugs movesets that really is exciting me for, I guess, the battle system. So is Fish Snack the only move with stun? No, um, there's one more. The shell, the snail shell and, has it. And Buzz Buzz does as, as well. The really? No way. Yeah, well, it, it reduces the Axie's next horn attack to zero. So, oh, okay. horn attack accuracy. Okay. So I, I guess that's kind of the same thing. It is like a skip, mm. skip turn kind of move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I, how do you guys navigate Freak's uh, tool? I guess, I don't know, like, so one thing that I was just doing for, <laughs> at the beginning was I just sorted everything by attack. We see that clearly, so the last one has pretty high attack, um, mm -hmm. uh, but also, if you, so when you, when after using this, you can't defend for the next two turns, so probably want to hope that you you know finish the match with this move right kind of like, i guess they called it the last one yeah <laughs> oh so so the ability means that you, the person who uses it has to wait two turns or whatever i didn't or realize it that it then. was mm. yeah. it's not actually it, it does does that actually matter that much because birds have like very little defense anyway though right <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much just like a one defense. It's really not minus one defense for the next two turns, if I'm interpreting that properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I read it as well. So that's kind of actually really good. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be like your final, final like kill move or whatever in your. Yeah. It'll be interesting. How many rotations will a normal match go through? Right? Like, will it just be one, and then you just you, know, you can put this there with you no know, no consequences or you know, I guess a lot of, you know, the utility of this move will depend on the average, you know, cycles per match, right? Yeah. I think, yeah, if there's a lot of high attack parts, then, then this the match will obviously be quick. But if it's like a team of three plants versus three plants, totally tanky, that could last forever. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Let's just go through a brief overview of the class advantages as well. I want to talk, I think, kind of viewing some a lot of the meta from that um, will open some analysis opportunities. Mm -hmm. So what are you guys seeing in terms of the meta? Um, so it looks like, so reptile and plant will be strong against aquatics and birds, and beast mm -hmm. and bug will be strong against reptiles and plants, right? So it's kind of like the circle of life, it's like nature, everything's supposedly balanced. Um, so one uh, thing that I feel like we might be able to use to our advantage, um, or at least to allow us to plan, um, is I was adding up, so there are three quadrants, right? I was adding up each 
uh, the three quadrants and seeing like which is the fattest one, right? And I think when I calculated this, it looks like beast and bug add together um, up up to more than reptile, plant, aquatic, and and reptile and plant and aquatic and bird, right? So mm -hmm. I was thinking that there these the beast and bugs might be overrepresented in the uh, axi you know battle population, or I guess in the squads that are battling. Um, and by that logic, it might make sense to stack, um, over stack a little bit with aquatics or birds. Um, and then, and then my, and then after, after that line of reasoning, I feel like a lot of people will think of that. So a lot of the good players will stack the, these reptile and plant to also, um, counter people who are going with the meta or kind of thinking about the meta in that way as well. Yeah, and then um, just, what do you guys think about it that way? For for my team personally, right now I'm thinking two aquatic and one beast will be best. Because I think, well, plants will be pretty popular due to the heal moves. Mm -hmm. I think that even though there's less like percentage of plants, they may be a little overrepresented on teams because everyone wants a good healer. So depending on how be good beasts are with their high morale but low health i would be interested in having one beast on my team and then the two aquatics just to uh, represent the beast and bug counter hmm. interesting <laughs> yeah i was thinking about going reptile and bird definitely mm -hmm. and then intentionally adding either aquatic or bug. Um, I'm not sure what I think about the beast class until we figure out what the accuracy matter modifier is, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the way that the beast moves work, I'll just bring it up here, is that uh, so you'll see that none of these moves at the top are really beast until you get to uh, imp, I guess, right? Um, it's because they have, the beast moves have this high accuracy stat, mm -hmm. which should theoretically compensate for their low damage, but without knowing the exact formula, then it's kind of, we don't really have enough information right now. Um, so yeah, what else What else have you guys seen? Um, so right now, also sorting by defense, so you see that uh, Crystal Hermit has the highest defense stat in the game, um, or Crystal Hermit and Hermit. Um, so Crystal Hermit is the Mystic, and Hermit is the non-Mystic version, version, but uh, they both have the same move, illustrating that the only difference between Mystic and non-Mystic parts is that the Mystic part will be evolvable into a Legendary. Hmm. Yeah, but level per level, it's no different from just the normal Hermit. Okay. Um, Tiny Dinos, uh, also super I actually like Tiny Dino more than Crystal Hermit with that plus six accuracy that it has on Crystal Hermit, I feel like that's enough to um, outweigh the minus one on attack and defense it has. has oh, okay. So we got the toothless, the toothless bite, the most lit move, in my opinion, <laughs> that has been released by the genius, Masamune. Uh, so basically, this move has a uh, I guess a mechanism called backdoor where the user prioritizes their furthest target. So I'm wondering if you have three axes with uh, if you have three axes with Ven with toothless bite or venom bite, can you arrange them so that you focus fire? Like <laughs> you know, like, oh, like can you make what? yeah, I see what you're saying. On the yeah. on the first turn, take it out. Mm -hmm. Might be really, people people might you know people might position their units and their lines so that that can't happen i'm is it preventable by positioning i guess is my question <laughs> yeah i my strategy is to have a tank in the front and in the back just because of toothless bite right now <laughs> whoa wow that changed the meta huh this one move right here yeah is that yeah. could that could really mess up a and, beast or a bird. And usually the ones you leave in the back are ones that have low HP, like the bird or whatever. That's gonna get destroyed by Toothless Bite because Toothless Bite is strong against a bird or whatever. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's um, what I'm saying. It's like dude, these reptiles are bird hunters, man. <laughs> 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 Seriously, they're coming for your birds. Um, 
watch out because a lot of people are gonna try and go with birds i think because of the meta and that's why i'm putting like op reptiles yeah. i might put like an aquatic with toothless into my lineup you know what sure. what's telling us wait so mystic parts don't have any extra points then so you know the mystic versus the regular yeah. version yeah that's right for when you're talking about like their levels com a mystic common versus a normal common like hermit versus crystal hermit the only difference is is that crystal hermit has a different look it's it's just like a skin but then mystics when evolving can go all the way to legendary so that's obviously a huge advantage you don't have to try to breed out legendaries we know that there's going to be some kind of condition for breeding a legendary um which is unknown right now but that could be hard to actually fulfill and then it's going to be a low percentage chance anyway so but yeah they're just skins level for level Mm. Yeah, um, the only difference between them is, like he said, uh, they're the same up to the point where a legendary part gets made from the Mystic, and that's where mm -hmm. it could have a tier 4 battle move, um, which will make the difference, obviously, at that point. But before that, before it levels up all the way to legendary for the Mystic, they're exactly the same, except it's just a different skin <laughs> on it, like, uh, like he's saying. Yeah. Yeah, and I believe you'll be able to like breed out, say, the legendary version of Hermit as a non-mystic. I'm sure that's breedable as well. Yeah, so there's a chance to get the legendary parts through breeding, but according to the developers, it is a very small chance. So it's much easier to do it with the mystic part, or just evolving the mystic part. So Yeah. Because the origin gene pool is has already has a set cap right mm -hmm. Dude, we will never release more origin traits through the eggs that we're selling yeah um, yeah that's a very important point that i want to hammer home all of the traits that are coming from the eggs will be new yeah eggs that are sold by the devs you can still breed these parts out of course but... yeah yeah so that so basically the you know the the origin axie owners are gonna have collectively a monopoly that Axie Infinity, the dev team, cannot really impinge on. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's. I think um, that's why I'm encouraging anyone who really likes one of these moves or parts that they should probably try to get it now because later it might be a little harder to get it. So I, I already saw one move that I really liked, which was a uh, snail shell. So I instantly had to go buy one of those in the market because I didn't want to... Yeah be left out or have to negotiate li later for one of those parts and mm -hmm. I honestly think it's my favorite move from all of the f all of the different moves that have come out because it just yeah, has a really, really cool good effect. defense and it's a bug move too so it has a really strong counter to uh, I believe grass and reptile so I just it's just one of those moves that I really wanted to have in, in my stash at least going mm -hmm. forward it's really expensive yeah. though I, I like Gecko. And I think Wall Gecko is one of the traits that I do not have. Um, I'm happy so I have one. That's so lucky there. Yeah. But yeah, that's going to be really mm -hmm. good on birds and beasts, I think, Wall Gecko. On, on tanks, it's not very good. Unfortunately, mine's on a tank. So, yeah, that's that doesn't seem too good. Mary Balloon. Is a Balloon a good move on a beast, though? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Like, a lot of, yeah, a lot of this, a lot of what, you know, a lot of people ask me like, "Oh, is my axi good?" Right? Like the, a lot of the quest, a lot of that, the answer to those questions, those types of questions will be determined by, you know, how different moves synergize and how useful they are on a given class, right? Because mm -hmm. what I'm finding is that, you know, the the moves aren't necessarily best on the mo on the classes that they belong to, right? Like yeah. for example, oh, an aquatic with toothless could be really crazy or a bird with toothless could be really crazy or a beast right imagine like a high morale toothless um you know mm. going on yeah especially something that has high morale is going to be really scary with toothless. Um, and yeah i guess you know those are that's basically all i had you know i wanted to talk about um and uh yeah i guess any final final words from arctic or chuck um yeah i guess I'm just looking forward to the beta and uh, all the strategy on every level for this game. I've never played a game that is 
this, I guess, level of involved with breeding and, you know, it, this just has, it has like almost every niche that I used to play combined into one. So it'll be really interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, what Arctic's saying on his point too, I just think, um, I think this game has like a lot of potential, like the potential to be able to breed your fighter or breed your Axie for battle and breed it exactly the way you want it for battle and your style mm -hmm. of battle. I think that's going to be one of the highlights of this game. Of course, there's other things like raising your Axie and breeding and different mechanics and mini games from what I've heard um, just around general the ideas. Um, I think this game just has a ton of potential and it definitely is a game that I'm really looking forward to just seeing what comes out of beta especially the breeding beta and then from that point on the battle beta whenever that comes out so yeah. it's a lot of potential to this game and i think the developers have really been showing what they're capable of in the last few weeks like the the site's ui has improved like 30 to 50 percent from what it was just two weeks ago so, and it feels like it was like that the whole time. Right, it's, right? It's just like, totally out of happened. nowhere, they just de developed Perfect. that. So I think I really yeah. trust these developers and what they're working on and the amount of time that they're putting into this game. So I, I just can't, in my mind, I can't imagine what's coming up next for this game. Yeah, no, I'm, it's, it's, it's super exciting. And yeah, I guess, you know, really grateful to Masamune and Trunk for all the hard work that they put in. You know, like, yeah, they don't... They don't they do, they like go way above and beyond the call of, of you know, the duties of a, of a founder. And like, it and seems like Trunk is always awake almost. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seems it's, like it's 5 a.m. his time and he's still awake. He sleeps around like three to four hours. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's just, crazy. Also, I, I know I'm on that schedule because, you know, like I think that's, those are the types of people that you want to follow. People who oh, I totally agree with you. That to you know like you know the I guess just like people who lead by example right if it's if the founder is on 18 hours a day then you know you as a community member you, and myself as like a, a community manager you know I feel like I have to be putting in that amount of effort so yeah I guess you know just uh, yeah it's super exciting and it's inspiring um, to, to work uh, with this with this team and yeah I'm super excited for the future and yeah I think Chuck made a really good point. In, in that in mentioning how this game has different aspects different mechanisms that should should theoretically appeal to different user bases um, so Masamune actually said that he in, he envisioned this game as satisfying the urges for I guess or satisfying the need for a game for pet owners but also like uh, people who want to battle and people who want to collect, right? So there's kind of like, you know, people who want to raise pets, people who just want to collect stuff, and people who want to train in battle, they will, they, those, all three of those demographics can kind of find their own niche and gameplay within the universe. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be super exciting. I really, I, yeah, and right now we're learning a lot about like, I guess like uh, the battle system. And I, I really want to, you know, I want to learn more about the terrariums too and the raising. Yeah, that's so a totally different aspect that will also, I'm sure, be super engaging. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, because no, it makes sense, right? Like Masamune put it in, I think, best when you know he said, like, as a pet owner, like, you wouldn't just you know have your pet like <laughs> without anything, right? Like, you, as a pet owner, you need, you want to feed it, you want to uh, put it to bed, you want to wash it, right? Like, that, those are things that are necessary um, yeah. when you're a pet owner. Right? And I think that just adds, like, we're trying to give life to these uh, axes in a way that no other digital collectible ever has, right? So I think, like, the first obvious thing that we've added is the animations, right? I think that is kind of on a level that we haven't really seen, right? And I think mm -hmm. the raising will also kind of bring these uh bring these axes to life like i think for some reason we were talking about the uh book the children's book, the velveteen rabbit in chat one day it yeah. really resonated yeah. because it's a, literally about a child's you know toy coming kind of coming to life um mm -hmm. and i think that's kind of you know that's what we're trying to do here um because in the digital age you know like obviously like if you share a picture of your pet or whatever like on social media like people might think that you're kind of weird 
but if you have a community where you can show off your pets and battle them together, you know, and that's and you all have fun doing that, you know, that's I think a lot more engaging, and I think that's a new a new model of ownership um, of pets potentially. Um, I'll facilitate I've, I've, made this, I've made this point before that I believe that a lot of pets are very harmful to the environment, and if these blockchain games can prevent people from owning certain pets especially even like exotic and endangered pets right um if we can you know satisfy that urge for people of ownership of something rare and exotic without doing damage to the environment like that's one cool cause that axie community could potentially get behind and i know so we've been going a little bit over i just wanted to say one more thing so um yeah i think that a lot of good could potentially come from this project so arctic and i actually did a bit of naming um, and I think, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just say, I'll just save the naming thing, um, as a surprise for later, but basically I think we found a way to potentially do a lot of good, uh, for endangered species, um, and animals. And I think, yeah, this, this game is about nature. Um, it, it was originally called Chimera because the axes are amalgamations of, uh, you know, many different types of animals. That's interesting. Um, I didn't know that. Is, is cool. there like a deep lore to the axes that I don't know about? <laughs> yeah, I, I, read, I read a interview that Masumune did, um, so yeah. that's where a lot of this information is coming. And I, I don't—we haven't like publicly released that interview yet. Because um, my but, mind is is blown right now <laughs> that there's <yeah>. some. <laughs> Um, okay. Anyway, so yeah, I don't want I don't want to ramble on. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, super excited for everything. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Obviously, these things are gonna grow and snowball as the community uh, grows as well. So uh, yeah, you know, you guys are the early viewers. Much appreciated. And uh, yeah, until next time.